Hello everyone, I'm Leah. And I'm David, and this is Wine Forecaster. Today we have Zugabi Vineyards 2011 Cabernet Franc. Mm -hmm. And Zugabi Vineyards, they are on Seneca Lake, on the north end, just on the east side. It's it's so close to Geneva, they actually say their uh, their well, their mailing address is Geneva. Geneva. And uh, you know, we found this on one of our exploits. It wasn't a winery that we really knew a lot about, but on one of our travels down through that area, we stopped by and you know we were really impressed. So we, we grabbed this Cabernet Franc. It's available now at $17.99, and uh, we've had a lot of really good luck with Cabernet Franc so far this year, haven't we? Yeah, we so, have. Yeah, so we've already poured it, um, but have done nothing else. It's been sitting in the glass for probably about 10 minutes. It's a uh, garnet color. Mm -hmm. Looks nice. Well, stymied by the uh, nose on there. What do you get with this? I'm getting some raspberry uh, notes to it with a uh, pepper component. I get some vegetal component. You know, I, for a second there, I thought I smelled like a hint of cranberry. And I and I do get a uh, I do get I do get some oak as well. Yeah, um, I definitely agree with the pepper notes too. It's a nice moderately dry wine. Moderately dry, moderately dry very mellow mm -hmm. through my, uh, as it passes over my tongue and coats the top of my mouth. Um, there's no real bite at all. No, no, not at all. Uh, not very tannic. Um, it's fruity, but it definitely has um, kind of a, uh, well, the toasted oak flavor really predominates, predominates my mouth. I get, a, I get a red fruit. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of some vegetables um, in there as well. Maybe some, um, I don't know, it's, it's not really a, almost like a, almost like a root vegetable mm -hmm. is what mm -hmm. I'm, is what I'm getting. Yeah. So it's, it's quite nice. I like it. It's, it's a nice dry wine. I, I don't really like super fruity wines unless I'm, I'm really looking for it, if I'm <laughs> aiming for it. Mm -hmm. But this is good. It's, Fairly unidimensional, in my opinion. It it's pretty much stays true throughout the whole experience in my mouth. You definitely want to be eating something with this, though. Otherwise, your my mouth is puckering up a little bit. It's mm -hmm. actually kind of difficult to, to talk. I just want a glass of water next to it. But that's not uncommon. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's it's usually when you're having wine like this, you're eating something with it. And I think um, yeah, that's I certainly case. grilled meats I think would work really well, especially in the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, that you know. Hey, we just had lamb recently. This actually would probably so go. go really good with lamb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, this is going to be, you know, they even mentioned, we read the back of their label, and they talked a little bit about their location. And one thing yeah. that's, you know, you have to take into consideration is that these vineyards are in the Finger Lakes. Why are they in the Finger Lakes? And it's because when the glaciers cut those lakes, they cut them very deep. And so those waters create a, a, a ecosystem around it that really, you know, helps to keep the climate pretty temperate. You know? so, so it creates a really good soil. You get a lot of rain um, runoff too, because obviously the vineyards are for the most part on hills and certainly Zogaby um, is, is certainly no exception to that. And then um, in the winter times, the warm waters will keep the vineyards um, warmer, warmer than other areas of upstate New York and then the same thing goes for the summertime you get the breezes coming off the lakes to keep the the vines somewhat cool if right. you will right. so um, which is why perfect. again yeah you you see a, a, a lot of the uh, the varietals like the Cabernet Franc and the Riesling mm -hmm. and potentially even maybe Pinot Noir right. you know thrive in this area where it's kind of difficult to grow Cabernet Sauvignon you know although mm -hmm. a lot of the wineries do do it because you know, people expect to see Cabernet Sauvignon on the menu but you know, it's difficult to grow. It's, it's tough. You know, one thing we were going to talk about today was was storing your wine. Um, you know, sometimes when you when you drink wine, you don't drink the whole bottle. You may drink a little bit or maybe half. Uh, it's quite a quandary unless yeah. you're going to use it for cooking as well, which sometimes we'll do. You know, what what do you do with that extra wine? Yeah, sometimes what we'll do is we'll actually plan out our meals in advance so that if we're going to open up, let's say if we we're going to open up this uh, Cab Franc. 
um, we make certain that we have maybe a day or two in a row yeah. where we're going to have meals that will, um, um, you know, complement the wine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, or I'll put it in something like beef stew is a great example of right. that, where I'll use red wine in there. Mm -hmm. Or if you have some type of red wine reduction sauce, yeah. um, that goes well. But if you're not going to do that and, uh, and you're going to leave it uh, for a day or two, the best thing to do, number one, is uh, try to get the oxygen out of the glass because that's going to just, it's going to harm uh, the wine. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Probably the, the, the cheapest way would be to use one of these. And I'm not going to go through and go all through all the pluses and minuses of different ones. You can research this. These are like three dollars. You just place the stopper into the bottle, and you just basically go up and down with this thing, and it pulls the pulls the air out of it. So it's a vacuum sealer. It's a vacuum sealer. It's a cheap device. I mean, I don't know how well it works. I mean, it's probably better than nothing. There's pluses and minuses to that. Um, there's other devices that you can purchase. There's one called a, a caravan. My, my father's got one of these. And it just pierces the cork, and then after the, it basically it fills the, uh, the the space with with argon gas, and that's supposed to be the best. Um, what what we really got, I'm they're like three hundred dollars, so that's a little pricey. But um, one thing that we've been doing, and this is something that is pretty much free mm -hmm. once you use it, is save your little wine bottles, you know, of different sizes, and you know whatever's left over will certainly fit into one of these and you can even work your way down if it's just you drinking it and uh, and then put it you know if you fill it up as far as you can there's there's no air in it and that that works out really really good as we always say air kills the wine yeah. at a certain point certainly it's it's good to get air into the glass and things like but that's that different. but if yeah. you're trying to store it then air really does kill the wine over a longer yeah. term like hours to days and then last but not least refrigerate the wine you, know, you don't. You wouldn't leave food out on the counter. Don't leave your wine out on the counter. Zuccabi Vineyards, 2011 um, Cabernet Franc. Uh, we recommend it. It's uh, actually tastes really good. Yeah. I, mean, I have no complaints with it. 17.99 price point, mm -hmm. so definitely worth it. Um, they have lots of different events at their winery as well. You can check out their website for more information. You mm -hmm. can check it out. It's going to be right here. Okay and also our website, which is wineforecaster.com. So I'm David. And I'm Leah. Thanks for joining us.